Greetings and welcome to Family Worship. We are grateful that you are there. Uh, please tell neighbor that we are here. And um, let's join us for this critical subject that we are doing, and that is we are dealing with the the greatest of all wars and of course we are dealing with some parallel subject subjects as groundwork or let's say foundational just to let it be a little easier to understand and to follow so therefore we're doing the world yesterday to the end uh, tomorrow where we will go to the history of the world and we will, of course, we are right at the world today and um, <coughs> then we will be going to the world tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So tell neighbor and with Bibles and with your <coughs> writing implements and your papers, please take some notes or make your own recording if possible or you can play the video over and over in order to get the point. If you still don't get the lesson, you are free to contact us to ask questions and make sure you are solid in the world at this time because we know there is a lot of deceptions that are lurking and it will get worse before it, it gets better. <clears throat> we are going to sing a few songs. Again, happy Sabbath day. Just you had a great day at church today. We did. We had some rain in the evening, but didn't affect us because it was only wet when we came outside. <clears throat> and of course, I think we are officially in winter, so we are under the cloud and the less sunlight in these days. Well, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We're going to sing a song, or as a matter of fact, let us have a word of prayer, and then we will start our program. <coughs> Go ahead. Kind Father, we want to thank you for this blessed Sabbath day. We want to give you all the praise, all the glory that is due to your holy name. We ask that as we go into our service, that we will tune our hearts to sing your praises. May you grant unto each one, in every family, the blessings they desire at this time, and that they will touch us all at our points of need. Hear and answer our prayers, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Or it will begin our service with sunshine. There's sunshine. That is 470. 470. There is sunshine in my soul today. Are you going to find it on yes. that? There is sunshine in my soul today. Four seven zero.
Disappointments, life can be really, really dreary. And the sounds of inflation. But let not the devil steal your joy. Don't allow him to steal your joy. <clears throat> it's hard sometimes, but we have to remember that God is in control. All right? He is in control. He is in control. Number 319, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. 311. Yeah. 
We can do we that. We can't sing it. Thought it was I'm um, looking on two songs at the same time. Same time. All right, yeah. it happens. So now, since we want to be like Jesus, you know, we can't do anything like that. We can't do anything of, as a matter of fact of ourselves. So we necessarily have to ask Jesus to help us to do what he requires of us, right? Mm -hmm. We have to will our will over to him. Mm -hmm. So we're going to sing this one, live out the life within me, <clears throat> number 316.
assures all of us that we ask Christ sincerely to live out your life, Lord, within us. God bless you. You're finished? Yeah, but not one reason I get to. Oh, yeah, I have another one. Okay, go ahead. It is 292. 292. I believe. God is going to help us and help us soon. Believe he's helping us <laughs> every day. He's helping us every day. Yeah. Reach the climax of our journey.
come to him now and no longer delay. Yes, come to me. Well, I have a theme song, but I'm going to open the program if you can get that. Okay. Guitar, huh? uh, we'll sing a theme song. <coughs> Again, welcome, thank you for joining us. We're on YouTube, we're on Facebook. And so, wherever you feel comfortable, also, <clears throat> we're on other platform. But, we thank God for Jesus, what do you say? We're grateful for the Sabbath when we can come apart, rest a while, and worship, and encourage, and inform, and educate, and be educated, and be informed. In the name of Jesus. We have a very beautiful message of the hour. We have a message that is worth being crucified for. We have a message that is worth being sawed in two for. We have a message that is worth dying for as we endeavor to take it to our brothers and sisters at whatever cost. Because you give up your life for his sake, that's all right because he is the life giver. He is life indeed. So we have nothing to fear. A very critical subject, brothers and sisters. You don't hear this because it's not popular, but it's the most important and most urgent message. Why? Because right now our message is the judgment of the hour. The three angels' messages with the judgment. Uh, uh, as an integral part of it <coughs> and therefore we need to be <coughs> studying and understanding that we are looking presently on the world yesterday today and tomorrow but we have done the world today before you can find that somewhere out there, so please take a look at that, meditate on that for a moment. <coughs> um, also, we, today we are doing some more on the world today. That's based in Revelation chapter 13. There's a lot of mistake regarding the understanding or misunderstanding of the beast of Revelation 13, the two beasts really, but more so the ten horns beast, or ten horned beast. So we are looking into that, we have all the evidences, the weight of evidences and all that. And so we hope and pray that you will take time to look into that. Alright, so <clears throat> I'm going to be sharing it now on YouTube and then I'll <clears throat> I will be launching off after we do a theme song. You have one, please. After we do a theme song. Jesus, uh, <clears throat> I know we did cover a portion yesterday, so we are going to be going a little further today. Um, Uh, 
going to go a little further than that today. All right. <clears throat> so let's uh, let's read the thought. We're going to read the thought. Read the scripture. Then we do our theme song and get into it. A matter of fact, let's just read. Read the scripture in everyone's hearing. That's Revelation. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation? Yeah. <clears throat> These Bibles, I don't know if they want to make it more expensive than make that complicated to me. Don't know about you. All these things in Bible makes it easier, make it more complicated. <coughs> Alright, reading Revelation chapter 13 And I stood upon the sand of the sea And saw a beast Rise up out of the sea Having seven heads and ten horns Upon his horns ten crowns And upon his heads The name of blasphemy And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, a bear and his mouth as a lion. <clears throat> and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his head, as it were wounded to death, and <clears throat> his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. They worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him? <coughs> well, this is a quite a profound scripture, and I'll just stop there. <coughs> this passage is understood by us as Seventh-day Adventist, but more so in our own way of understanding it. Some do understand that it is the Pope. Well, the, the general understanding and teaching is that this whole beast is the Pope. But just think for a moment. Why would God put one entity when he has all of the many others and put it just in a beast and describe the ten horns as having crowns, right? While the one of the heads, six head, I mean seven heads, but one leaving six was wounded. But brothers and sisters, Go back to the study that we have done previously. We have done part one, let's call it part one, because we didn't go for, uh, much um, too far in this part one of the, the, world, the world today. Uh, the world today is really what this beast of revelation is talking about. 
So it encompasses the world, all the systems, the ten horns, if you recall the ten horns that showed up on the nondescript beast of Daniel chapter 7. The ten horns that showed up on the nondescript beast of Daniel chapter 7 was predicted as kings that will arise. So in other words, they weren't really kings yet when they showed up as ten horns on the nondescript beast, meaning Rome, pagan Rome, and papal Rome. But they were to be kings sometimes in the future. Well, let me tell you, those ten horns of the, of the nondescript beast that shall be kings were made kings in our world. Ten is universal. Therefore, they are, the horns are civil power. The horns are have showed up now in our day with crowns showing that the divided world at this time is what this beast is showing to us, including the papacy, which is only one single head that is wounded and, of course, and are healed in a symbolic way because the Pope, the papacy wasn't really given back in 1929, wasn't restored to the power that was there before. So this beast of Revelation 13, we're not touching the torn beast right yet, we will. But this beast, the first beast in Revelation 13, is representing, as we discuss, go back to the video, look at the evidences, is describing the present world, paralleling or comparing to the ten toes of the image. That image of Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 2 is a representation of the history of the world, right? from Babylon all the way to the present world. The present world is represented on that beast as not a universal power, but as ten toes which are iron mingled with clay in the feet of the image. So it patterns after the beast of Re the first beast of Revelation chapter 13, and so God is showing us where we are living today. Amen. Note this also: this beast could not be the Pope per se or the papacy per se, because this beast is made up of Babylon. Media, Persia, Greece, and Rome. How do we know that? Well, it has the feet of a bear, the body of a leopard, the, it has the ten horns, the, and it has the mouth of the lion, and all that. So what does that tell you? That it is a melting pot of the world, the history of the world, in our time, telling us that all the philosophy have come down now to us and we are here now and we don't have a single um, universal power per, per se what the nations are all divided and have their own kings have their own authority the crown in scriptures symbolize authority all right, so we are going to look on that a little more. That was just a review because we dealt with some of this. 
And I was just doing that as a review to show you that actually that's where we are. So what we are looking at here is that the outgrowth of the Roman Empire has given us a world of many different splinters of nations. It has also given us a multiplicity of churches, Catholics and Protestant churches. And that's what the, rep the, rep the heads are representing. Seven is complete, all, perfect. So God is showing us that in this beast, we have all the civil power in their independent, local, and all the churches in their independent, local. And they are not ruled by the papacy, but the papacy is just one of those heads. One of the heads, and is identified as the one with the wound that was healed eventually. So God is showing us our world through the beast of Revelation 13. All right? <coughs> so, <coughs> let us sing our theme song and then I'll take it up, oh, go a little further with that. See if we can by the aid of the Holy Spirit, cover some more grounds. So, I guess we have a song. Thank you. 
Let's go to the Word. Let's go to your the Word, your <clears throat> your Bible, your <clears throat> your Bible, uh, Bible, and your paper and your pencil, your writing implements in hand. We will. <clears throat> go through in a timely manner on the world. <clears throat> the world today, brothers and sisters. The world today. I need to come and read some of this thing. Yes, Alright, the world today, if you do if you please. So we're just going to pick up 
right here where we are. It's going to pick up right here where we are. Um, I think I need to back up. I think I need to back up a little. But, um, let me see if I cover that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to pick up right here. Not ruled by the popes. Not ruled by the popes. And the backdrop of that is that we are talking about the fact that many are online today, a Seventh-day Adventist, and their topic of discussion is the Sunday law and the Pope and what the Pope is doing and who is, is meeting with and, and all that. But they are missing a critical subject that Seventh-day Adventists must promote. Yes, the backdrop of the Pope and the 1260 years of Dark Ages is clear. Yes. But there is something coming like a rushing mighty wind. And you need to know that. So let us go through, and I explain. So, in other words, this beast, we read this scripture, and if you want to read it again, go back there. It is Revelation chapter 13. And we, read, we are looking at the first beast, which is called the leopard beast. Uh, the leopard-like beast. In other words, this leopard-like beast represents a world comprised of nations, brothers and sisters, with their own authority, a world with numerous churches, a world in which we have Catholics, Protestants, a world with nations, all having their own authority, they are no longer ruled by the popes. The world that we are living in, the present day world, is represented by the beast of Revelation chapter 30. You need to have that clear in your minds. Because other, well, other than that, you are going to be looking in a certain direction as the church, as many um, people or many groups so-called are pointing you in one direction. But the Bible didn't tell them they are running with a zeal without knowledge. Follow the Bible. And there we are, we are tonight. God is careful, brothers and sisters. Careful. To make sure that he, lay out, he lays out the whole world of today and points out the entities that we must mark and we must pay attention to and who is in charge. Not the Pope right now. Yes, in the past, this beast came out of that. This is very important to fix in our minds. That's why we want to repeat it, because it is very important. This beast represents the world in which we live today, a world made up of Catholics, yes, Protestants, yes, and nations all having their own authority. 
because they are no longer ruled by the popes, but another way, put another way, the leopard-like beast is not the papacy. It's not the papacy in its entirety, but the world today. You see, the papacy is only one wounded head. What is the papacy? One wounded, one wounded head on the beast. Hear me out, somebody. The leopard-like beast primarily reveals the Western civilization. civilization. The Western civilization is what God is showing us. So don't, don't let them point you because they are running with zeal, without knowledge. They are pointing you in one direction. And they have the crowd going down the broad way. A civilization who is a descendant of the Roman world. In other words, we live in a Protestant world, a Christianized world. Uh, that's another way of putting it. A world that came out of Roman Empire, that has its descendants from Babylon all the way up to our time. That's why it has the mouth of a lion, the feet of a bear, the body of a leopard, and it has ten horns of the nondescript beast, Rome, both pagan and papal Rome, so this beast again primarily represents Western civilization. You never knew that was in, in prophecy. Anybody out there? Is it strange? Is it shocking that the Western world is in prophecy, just like the Pope and the papacy. Well, don't be shocked or surprised anymore, because it is. Because it is a Western civilization that is based on Christianity, Catholics, and Protestants. You see, when the little horn uproot the three horns, Three nations were demolished. Again, the beast was left with seven, but before, but it was long predicted that ten represent univer universe, worldwide, universal leadership, and they were to give them their power. They didn't have that in the time of the Roman Empire. Why do we know that? Well, the horns were naked. There's no crown. And Daniel, seven beast, they call the nondescript beast, no crowns. But if you notice, the crowns are on the leopard-like beast. All crowns, individual, ten horns, ten crowns. Universal. That's what we are living in today. That's why you get passport and visa, and because every. Body has their authority.